Hello again my friends, Rob here from Button Press Graphics, back with another YouTube video. And as you can probably hear, I have been having work done on my mouth and jaw, so my voice is slightly different. This will be changing and I will be back to my usual self in the coming weeks, and I have got a message at the end of today's video for those of you who are interested. Despite that, I am going to be giving you this design today it is the embossed design it is very simple but very effective so without further ado let's get started now as you just saw you can use pretty much any shape that you want in order to do this design and as you can see on screen this time i'm going to use text bpg for button press graphics so now that i have got what i want to use as my shape to emboss i am going to click on it and i am going to change the font because i want the font to be as thick as possible now i'm going to come over to the right hand side and i'm going to select my text editor right here now if you haven't got your text editor open you can find it by coming to this bar on the right hand side and it will be signified by the letter t give that a press and this menu will open up right here now i'm just going to search through and i'm going to try and find something that is very very thick indeed we need something that is quite thick but has a decent spacing between all the shapes that we're going to be using and there you go, as you can see, Russo 1 is giving me the exact kind of thickness that I'm after. With that done, I have now come to my fill and stroke menu. Again, this can be found on the right hand side, right here with this button. Once you have it open, I am going to come down to the opacity and I'm going to drop this in half. Something around there is going to be perfect. Next, I want to make sure that this is the right size. So I'm going to increase the size to around here and then I am going to right click and lock the selected objects right here at the bottom. Now this is going to make sure that I cannot move these letters. Next we need to create the lines. Now these are done in exactly the way that you think. We come across to our pen tool, we give that a select and then we click from one side hold control to make sure that it stays completely horizontal and we click on the other side once we're done we can either hit enter or we can right click and that will give us our line now while we still got the fill and stroke menu open i'm going to go to stroke paint i'm going to select a dark blue and then I am going to go to stroke style and I'm going to make the stroke around two pixels. Now it's up to you how thick you want to make your lines. It is personal preference, but I find that around two is absolutely perfect. Now that we have our first line, now all we have to do is duplicate this line multiple times going from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to go to my select tool and then while holding control I am going to scroll it down and I'm just going to keep pressing the space bar multiple times and once it's all covered we will have something that looks like that. Now you don't have to worry about the spacing because we are going to deal with that right now. We can just click anywhere to deselect everything and then we're going to hold alt and we're going to bring the mouse down while clicking and holding over every single line. This is going to select every single line that there is. Now we're going to need our align and distribute menu open, which as you can see is already open on my screen right here. But if you want to open yours again, come to this right menu and select this button right here. Once you have got the menu open, come down to this button right here. Distribute vertically with even vertical gaps. Give that a click and they will all 
go from the top to the bottom line that you placed and evenly space out every other line in between. And now as you can see, we have something that looks like this. Now when it comes to placement, what I want to do is I want to make sure that these lines are quite central to the shape underneath. Now as you can see, this top line is quite close to the top of these letters. I don't really want it to be there, so I'm going to click and drag down while holding control to get it more centralized, a bit like that. And there you go, it really is that simple. Now that we've done all of that, we come to our first main step, and that is adding nodes to all of the lines. This is a very simple process, even though it will take a little bit of time to do. Firstly, I'm going to click off everything in order to deselect it all. And then I'm going to go to my node tool. That's this button right here. With that selected, I am now going to select each line until you get the nodes on either side. Now, when I zoom in, every single time we go across the line and we see the line intersecting with where the shape underneath is, we're going to go over it and double click. This is going to add a new node exactly where the cursor was. Now I'm going to come across, I'm going to do it again, as it starts to intersect right here with the edge of the shape underneath. Double click, we've got a new node. And again, double click, new node. Double click, new node. Double click, new node. It carries on in this way until we've done every line that goes over the shape that's underneath. Select the line, go to where it intersects, double click, double click, double click. Now it doesn't really have to be perfect. As you can see, this one is not quite right. You can just hold control and you can move it along by clicking and dragging it. Now I will catch up with you later when I've done all of these and then we can move on to one of the final steps. And when you're done, you should have something that looks a little bit like that. Now we're going to start moving these lines using the node tool. So individually, we're going to go to each line and we're going to grab. When you see the little four way symbol come up next to the cursor, you're going to click and you're going to drag it up. Now there's a few caveats to this. Number one is do not move this line more than halfway between these two lines. So as you can see, these two lines are evenly spaced. Around here is about the halfway point between the two lines. So when you're moving this line up, do not move it any further than the halfway point between the two lines. Next, if we go down to areas like this, for example, as you can see, this line right here is very, very close to the bottom of this shape. In order to do this, we are going to move this line in a different way. Instead of just moving it up and across from the middle of the line, we are going to pick this one up and we're going to move it up. But when it comes to this point, we are just going to move it up on one side a little bit more. And you can of course use these handles in order to get it looking perfect. Now, if need be, you can also add another node. This is going to give you more control over the way that it moves. So you can have something that looks a little bit more like that. 
Now that looks quite good for the shape that I have got. And I'm just going to go through and again, select the line and from the middle in between the two nodes, wait until you can see the four way cursor appear, click and drag up, but no more than halfway between the two lines. Now I'm just gonna go through and I'm going to do all of them and I will catch up with you at the end. Now, just as a side note, as you can see with this one, I have made sure that I've added another node and I want to get this to look like it's just coming up and then it sort of dips a little bit underneath where this part of the shape is. This just gives it a more organic look as you can see. And then with this one, because it is such a long line, I don't want it to just have a massive curve. I want it to sort of curve up quite abruptly at the edges and then sort of level off. Now that means I just come to these nodes and I just tweak these nodes so they're not like this and they're more like this near the end. And that way it gives it a more of an organic feel, more dynamic and it doesn't look like it's out of place. It blends in with the line above. Then when it comes down to this one, obviously it will carry on and the shape will do all the heavy lifting there on out. when you're done you should have something that looks a little bit like this now of course with that dark shape behind it you can tell exactly what it's bumping over but we don't really want that so what we're going to do is we're going to come over the top of the shape that we've been using as a guide and we're going to right click and unlock now we have our shape again now the final step in order to get this to look like it's embossed onto some paper is by of course using the filter of drop shadow. Now you can get to that by going to filters, shadows and glows, and then drop shadow. This will bring up the menu. Now I'm going to hit live preview to show you exactly what it's like. And I have got at the moment four as the blur radius and I've got a horizontal and a vertical offset of 0.9. Now I'm going to lower that down a little to maybe 0.5. That looks pretty good to me and I've got it select on inner cutout. Now with that done I can lower the blur I think a, quite a lot. I don't want it to be overbearing so that looks quite good to me. I'm going to leave it as number three. So I'm going to set it like that with these settings. If you want to copy, by all means do so. I'm going to hit apply and then close out of it. Now with it still selected, we can go to our fill and stroke menu and we can increase or decrease the opacity. I'm going to decrease it quite a lot. So it is more of a suggestion rather than a feature. Something around that. I've got 18.3 on mine, but you can set yours to whatever you would like. Now, of course, if you were to render this out as a PNG file, it would just be the shadow with lines over the top. If you want to make sure that you have a background, like a white square, for example, then you would need to go to your squares and rectangles tool, click and drag over the entire thing, making sure that the lines are over the edges. And once you have, you can then add corners if you want to. Now that I have got this square, I'm going to put the opacity all the way up, turn it white, 
and then we can select all and then use this shape at the end in order to clip it but first i want to make sure that this shape is at the very bottom that means going to our select tool and selecting this button right here and there you go my friends that's how you create the embossed design now like i promised as a special message i just wanted to say thank you massively to everybody who over the past six months have been absolutely amazing with your support your kindness and your positive view set and words that have been sent to me it has been a very very difficult time going through the healing process and the whole procedure itself but thanks to your positivity and your love and support it has been made a whole lot easier i really do appreciate that and i know it sounds like a cliche but i am really thankful i don't think i could have done it as well as i have without your love and support thank you for coming back and watching these videos i'm going to bid you a fond farewell and i will see you of course in the next one did you know that you can become a member of the button press graphics youtube channel well now you do you will get a lot of added benefits and you will directly support the channel enabling me to make much better content in the future also you can send in your artwork into the creative corner this is a regular section where i will showcase your work in a future video but for now thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it i'm going to bid you all a fond farewell and i will see you next time